Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Anil Kamath. I am a consultant surgical oncologist at Helios Cancer Clinic. So today I would like to talk to you all about parathyroid adenomas. What are these? What problems do they cause? How are they treated? So for those who don't know, parathyroid are part of the endocrine system. That is, they secrete a hormone known as parathyroid. Every person will have four parathyroids, which will be small glands situated behind the thyroid, two on each side. So why is this parathyroid gland important? It secretes the hormone parathormone. The parathormone is responsible for maintaining the calcium levels in the blood. So what happens when one of the glands starts over-functioning? So there is an increase in the parathormone levels. The way the parathormone maintains calcium in the blood is by mobilizing this calcium from the bone. So when there is increased parathormone levels, more calcium is mobilized from the bone into the blood. And what happens is that the blood level of calcium increases and the bones start becoming weak or osteoporotic. And one of the important causes one of the main causes of increased parathormone levels or primary hyperparathyroidism as we call in medical terms is a small benign tumor in the parathyroid known as parathyroid adenomas. What happens in these adenomas is one of the gland produces a benign tumor and starts over functioning. Sometimes it may be more than one, there may be two or even more than that. When this gland over functions and there is increased calcium level in the blood, what the calcium starts doing is that it starts going and depositing in places where it should not be. If it goes and settles in the kidney, it can produce stones in the kidney known as nephrocalcinosis. It can produce symptoms because what can happen because of renal stones like pain while passing urine and other such things. When it goes and deposits in the pancreas, it can cause a condition known as acute pancreatitis or inflammation of the pancreas. Increased calcium also leads to generalized muscle pain. It leads to weakening of the bones. So certain bones may lead, may go on to have pathological fractures. And in certain cases, because of the weakness, it might be seen as a lump, as a tumor in the, in the bone. Psychological problems are also common in hyperparathyroidism because of parathyroid adenomas. So these are the various symptoms of parathyroid adenomas. So how are they diagnosed? Diagnosis requires to have a strong degree of clinical suspicion. Usually the diagnosis is done by an endocrinologist. When they see and suspect these symptoms, they initially do the blood test, which is the calcium levels and the phosphorus levels. And what happens in parathyroid adenomas is the calcium is very much higher than what it should normally be. And once the calcium level is higher, the next step is to do a parathyroid hormone assay itself. And in most of the cases, the parathormone levels would be quite high. So once these two factors are there, that is raised calcium and increased parathormone levels, the next thing is to see if there is an adenoma or a tumor in the parathyroid. For this, the best test is a nuclear scan, what we call a technetium system EB scan. By doing this scan, we can see whether there is a gland which is over-functioning in the neck. Apart from this, a high-resolution CT scan of the neck may also help us identify the parathyroid adenomas. Why do these adenomas occur? We don't have a straightforward answer for this. It may be due to various reasons. Many times there will not be a specific reason at all. It is known to be associated with certain genetic syndromes like the multiple endocrine neoplasia. There is MEN1 and MEN2. So parathyroid adenomas can be a part of this MEN syndrome. We must also remember that patients can have parathyroid adenomas and some amount of raised calcium and totally be asymptomatic. Sometimes this is just detected during routine health check. But still, since the raised calcium levels 
can give rise to problems, it is proposed that we do treat these patients. So once there is a diagnosis of a parathyroid adenoma, the next step is treatment. So what is the treatment which is done? By and large, the treatment which is followed is surgery. The surgery requires making a small incision in the neck, identifying the parathyroid adenoma and removing it. The surgery is simple, but the main challenge would be to locate the parathyroid adenoma. There are anatomical landmarks within which these adenomas are detected. If it is properly detected, the surgery is simple. It can be done through a very small incision. But in certain cases, identifying the gland may be difficult. And in other cases, the challenge might be that you remove one adenoma and in about 15% or so, there may be a second adenoma because of which the calcium levels do not fall to normal levels. So proper preoperative planning of the surgery is important. Once the surgery is done, the parathormone levels start dropping immediately. In fact, most of the time, we do the test intraoperatively to see if the parathormone levels have started coming down or not. Within a few days, the calcium levels stabilize. A few patients may go on to the opposite side or hypocalcemia because once the offending gland has been removed, it may take time for the other glands to function normally. So these are the various things that you need to know about parathyroid adenomas. It is a highly curable condition and when properly treated, the patient should get good benefits out of surgery. Thank you.